I wrap Stand Up Lynn and Associates with your financial market wrap up and this wrap up is for Monday evening and we are now oh, about 6.05 p.m. Central Time on Monday the 23rd of November 2020. Well we had a really fun webinar today. Remember these live webinars go quite a while. Today's was 50 minutes. I try to make them in that between that zone and an hour. When I got done, some people at the last minute had sent in questions. They just didn't come to me quick enough. When I start the webinar, I say, send me all your questions. Then I can time what's going on. But if I get them right at the tail end, uh, sometimes I just don't see them. Just human error on my part, nothing else. We are up strong in the stock market tonight. Why? The GSA has been given the go signals that they can start briefing President-elect Biden's team. So the transition has begun. That would not happen without President Trump allowing it. So he's allowing it in one manner or the other. Uh, I think we're looking at the reality setting in and he could have another run in four years. You know, there's nothing to say that he won't. He's not going to go away quiet. You know that, and he's not going to be quiet over four years. He is in everyone's mind that's a Republican. He's their banner, and that's how it's going to be. When we take a look at bonds and notes, well, that news probably puts a little pressure on them. We'll see what it does for the dollar. You probably get a little bit further of a bounce in the dollar and some down move off of that into these markets. Copper's in its own world, so don't try to read anything off of that. Copper market is still looking, I think, at all the positives of AstraZeneca that came out today. Now, AstraZeneca has, to me at least, just as an average guy out there, a lot of advantages. Yeah, the disadvantage right off the bat is the efficacy rates 90% versus the others 94 to 95. However, $4 or $3 a shot, whoa. Shelf life doesn't need to be refrigerated. Room temperature, how long can that last? So you've got now something that is more mainstream than these others that have to be frozen, put into a special area that you go. I would think that any immunity center can give you this shot. And once they're common, you'll be getting it in your doctor's office like a regular flu shot, not one of these frozen areas and all that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what has happened from Pfizer and Moderna's products. I am saying it's great to have more of them, and I'm sure there's more coming on. I don't believe that this is anywhere near the end of it. The good news is I see light at the end of the tunnel. I'm, I'm looking at it, and so does this market. This market today not only saw the AstraZeneca, it saw more. Now it's got the GSA, and it's like, whew, this, this election process is now going to go more into the norm than that. So when we look at the S&P on a weekly basis, we're up 1%, up 37 points, still over that high close that we made. Remember, this is a close-only chart, and we're only at the beginning of the week. You still haven't come out of this whole pattern. You can draw a downtrend line right like this. You can then probably draw an uptrend line. You might be able to connect this point all the way through those. I haven't done it, but I can see, I can visually see it because I do charting all day long. Uh, you can maybe even draw it, you know, like I just said, right through there. The point is you're narrowing in. You're coming in like this, trying to figure out what is the next move. As for the chart action itself on swing lines, you have higher lows, you have higher highs. So until the market takes out 35.42.25, what is it? It's bullish. The definition of a bull is typically higher lows, higher highs. A bear is lower highs, lower lows. And in some manner, when you have a higher high and a lower low, or you get the lower low first and then the higher high, there's no trend. So you have to wait for the stepping ladder one way or the other. When I look at where the market's at, the 18-day average is racing now to get past this 35.42 level, so we can offer support without breaking that. Doesn't mean it'll happen in time, but the market is moving at the note of, if you take a look at this, about 15 points a day. So that's going to bring it up tomorrow to around the 35.29, 35.30 level. I'm just giving a guess as to where it could be. Remember, you're going to drop these numbers, and wherever you're at, even if it's down hard, you have enough weight up here to move that average. Bollinger Band, far away. So this is not your 
resistance zone. And by the way, one of the questions at the end of the day that I didn't see was do pivot points for people. I wish I would have seen it early on. I'd have done them and show you exactly how I use them. So bring it up in the very next meeting for me. I promise you I'll bring them up for you and show you how I use them. Uh, so at this point, higher lows, higher highs bullish. We're over the 18 day average, the bias is up. We don't wanna see 35, 42 and a quarter taken out, but momentum, nah, 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 nah. You got, a, you got a real battle here. The market momentum is number one overbought. It never did embed, so it's just an overbought market, which means it does not owe getting down to the 18 day average of closes. But to attract new buying, you have to get either out of the overbought status by breaking or embed. It's gonna be one of the two here and the market's not giving me an idea which one of the two. In the NASDAQ, we have a pattern of lower highs and a lower low. That is bearish. But it's countered completely by the market being over the 18 day average. The two wipe each other out. There's no edge to the market. In other words, the filter to be bearish, if you're over the 18 day average, I have a rule. You're never establishing a short position off swing lines above the 18 day average. There's one rule that breaks that and it doesn't have anything to do with the swing line. It has to do with slow stochastics. Take the charting course and you learn it. And it's a what I think is one of the higher probability trades, but that's my opinion again. You've got momentum turning down. You're no longer uh, pointing to the upside. It's gradually drifting and prices drifting with it. And even tonight's action up 43 points, which is nice, uh, isn't changing that pattern. In the Dow, the market's got the fully embedded reading. It was iffy. I wrote to my clientele and over the weekend I said, we can't have this market down. If it's down on Monday, you're gonna lose the embedded reading. Well, we had an outside day to the upside and now you're getting a further jump. That doesn't mean you can't take some money off the table in this area. You're a long way from the 3,100 level, 31,000 level that I actually think you're gonna hit before all said and done. Will you hit it before Christmas? I don't know. I, I could be wrong that you will hit it. I, I don't know. But I think Santa's coming to town. You've heard me say that now that the GSA has been given the go ahead with the president-elect's team, I think that's another positive. I can't wait to hear, I think it's December 1st, we're gonna see uh, US Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and Fed Chair Powell before the Senate, I think it's the Finance Committee. They have to give where we're at on the COVID relief and everything now, they're gonna be drilled. I'm sure it'll be on TV. And the thinking of Mr. Mnuchin with 20 days before the Treasury Secretary is out of his position as the new administration's coming in. Why did they take that money off the table? It's gonna be very fascinating. I have my own ideas. But higher lows, higher highs, still bullish, embedded reading, all systems still go. The Russell, this is the strongest of the indices. It's just a powerhouse and it just keeps going ever since it went from here. The rotation in the stock market is taking over the small and mid caps. That, that's what's basically going on. And they are on a run to the upside. It's a lot easier to get from 1827 to 1882 folks than it is to get from 29,000 to 31, 30,800, that's my point. Uh, and this is still the strongest looking of the chart. And look at the momentum. It's not even trying to turn down yet. It will, but it hasn't just yet. In the VIX, still an embedded reading. When we had the uh, webinar today, I was telling people that all you had done is rallied up if you had attended the webinar to a key moving average that I don't show here, and the market had been flashing sell signals. We'll see if that follows through in the morning or not. We did that live and it's in the video if you go to look at it. Um, December bonds, higher lows, higher highs. Stochastics, flat, bull trend could fall back to the 172.17 level. Momentum's not giving us an indication one way or the other of anything. In the 10 year notes, we're in the do or die area. Should you take out 138.07, 
Well, that's going to give you a higher high and lower low, and all of a sudden you're out of the uptrend. So this is an important pullback. Will the market be able to bounce away from here to keep the uptrend going? Momentum-wise, you've just flattened out. It's not pointing down. As I said, in the dollar index, I thought traders were hoping to get this market in under 9,200 to see what's there. They didn't. They lost control of it. But what about the embedded reading? Both numbers are under 20, both under 20 Friday, both under 20 Thursday. So until the red line gets over 20, which it easily could do, if it does and closes that way, my objective is 92.91. If the market fails to do that, and this is the whole rally and you start slipping back again, watch out if you take out today's lows on Tuesday or Wednesday. If you do, it's an outside day up. My rule? my rule. If the market takes that out, I look for an immediate test of the closest moving average under the market, major one, there are none, or the closest Bollinger Band. That's where it's at, at 91.68 and a half. Um, in the euro currency, we had an outside day down and it went right to the 18-day average and pretty much held that zone. Uh, today, let's see, what was the low today? 18.04 and a half. 118, yeah, 118.04 and a half, 118.03 is the 18-day average. Markets bounced away. It has been overbought. It has been and still is now. In what trend? Well, if you look at this low, I wanted to leave this not marked for you. The low there was 118.22. You then come up like this. You make a higher high and a lower low. So I'd have an arrow pointing down, an arrow pointing up. You're not in a trend. That would be the right way to do that. In the Japanese yen, you have the momentum pointing down again. You lost your way to the upside. I don't understand what got in this market to begin with to get up there. You, you remember me saying that. I, I, fundamentally, I didn't see anything. And now the market's washing itself back out down again. The trend is back to the downside until you take out 96.47 and a half, a possibility getting back to the 94.81 level. All systems are bearish, at least as I view them at this point. Bitcoin, until you lose the embedded reading, stays up. Now, does that mean you can't move stops within the market? No, it doesn't. But it's still very much in an uptrend and still going full bore. Uh, Brent versus WTI crude. So you got up to the $3 level, and that's a heck of a move. You know, the market crossed over right here and then came back and kept testing this area and then moved out. Remember, this is a... This is the differential of these markets on a daily basis. And as you can see, it's making a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, almost like a swing line. So it's really broken out to the upside. And that's because OPEC plus can easily take oil off the market. U.S. can't do it that way. Our producers are all independent. We don't have an association. Hey, John, shut down your well. Bill, you do the same thing. OPEC can do that. Higher lows, higher highs, embedded reading. Certainly nothing bearish on this chart, but you are into an area that's getting rich in flavor. There is a number here where the market is more the fluff of getting the vaccine than the reality of the demand right now. And this is for a January contract. So the question is, for January, are we getting too far in price? That's how you got to think about it. WTI crude following, there's that $3 differential, embedded reading, breaks in the market. I would look for support in both of these. And the question is, do they, on a good break, do they hold on to their embedded reading? Heating oil market, up and away. Now, I've said a couple of things. I don't like being short heating oil markets until you've had that first hard, cold weather. It's dangerous. I've done this 50 years. This contract hasn't been around that long, but I've watched it since its beginning. And nature is that way. I mean, you can get a warmer than normal winter, but you're going to get that cold spell. And the first one sets you up for different things. It gets rid of, we haven't had it, or the people that are looking for it, and the market gets back into a norm. This is still an uptrend with an embedded reading. It is still strong as can be. Natural gas, losing the embedded reading. 
when you lose an embedded reading, and let's get to this market on the close today of a Monday, you lost it. You're not immediately losing it. The odds favor, it's lost. The odds favor it. This is where I think the pros are now going to cover shorts, thinking the market can get back up to that 18-day average. I'm not saying to go long. I'm saying that I think the traders are covering their shorts. That's what I'll tell you. All right, I put this all together daily for you in the morning. 5.40 in the morning, like clockwork, I'm typically recording. Every now and then a clock runs out of a battery, so maybe I'm a few minutes late. That, that can happen, or if there's a computer breakdown somewhere. But the idea here is I want to create an, a, a video that you as a trader have an idea or you're looking for ideas on the market and you want to bounce them off somebody like me that I think I'm a seasoned chart analyst. And that is the whole idea of my morning subscriber video. It's to give traders that want that the kicker. I am not trying to be your broker. I'm trying to be a market analyst. Do we understand? If I were your broker, I'd talk to you about money management. What are you doing? How many contracts you're trading? What am I going to charge you? Blah, blah. I have brokers that do that and they will work with you that way. They want to work with you that way. I don't. I, I have one function as a research person to give you the best I can on a chart and then my other hat is running my brokerage business. That does not mean taking phone calls throughout the day to talk to clients about their positions. Then I can't do the research that drives the clients to us. It's a combination and this seems to work as to how people want to do things. So how do you get this all? Well, number one, let's talk about what you get. Uh, six days a week, I make a video. You can watch the video either on our free app that our subscribers get. It works on Android and it works on uh, the iOS systems. You can watch it on your tablets. You can watch it on your computer. If you watch it on our website, you get an advantage. And that is, as I'm covering the markets, I go back after I've rendered everything, and in the markets, I put in categories for you. I, this will not appear if you're not on our website. It has to do with how it's broadcast. But I break everything down this way, and on the bottom, there's a scroll bar. You pull the scroll bar. Let's assume you wanted to go just to the uh, energies. Just pull it across till it lines up energies. This video is 15 to 25 minutes long every day. They're not short videos. They're meant to be in depth. I have clients that only want to trade metals. I have clients that want to trade the first four markets. I'll give you an idea. So I have to do that. Can I make a different video for each one? Do you have any idea if I made a separate one, I'd never have it out before the market closed. And I have pretty fast computers. Be too much work, can't do that. With one video that lights up in big letters and it tells you right where you're at, that's what I do. So in that morning video, I'm giving you what's happened in Asia, Europe, giving you the rundown of what I'm seeing at this point in time. And believe me, I'm not bashful. I throw out specific trade recommendations. Are they all gonna work? No. Are, you, are they all gonna lose? No. Will I employ everything I know on every trade? Yep. Will I use money management? Yep. So you're getting all of that I have. Win, lose, or draw. That, that's what I do. How do you see this? Well, if you wanted to see what I teach, you can go today on our website at www.irapstein.com under education. You can see the webinar. You'll be paying the same fee to see it that you do to subscribe. I want to tell you, I want to make everything free to my subscribers and that those that aren't, I give them a certain amount of free looks. I want to tell you. So if you've used up your free looks, you're not going to get them. But a certain amount of free looks you get and then after that, you're in the system where you've got to be, join us or don't look at it. It's that simple. But it's full of information. You don't go to a doctor for free. You don't go for advice to your accountant for free. I'm not free other either for the stuff that I do. So this type of fee, it's a joke. That many days, you're getting out of 30 days a month, 26 videos. Only, in other words, I take off four days for you typically, and yes, I am going to take a vacation every now and then, but if you're a subscriber, you tell me how many you've seen me take. Just go to the website to subscribe. Go under the word research. That's where you do it. I'm Ira. Have a great day.